Where's Rosemary? I'm gonna go back and get her. That's right. There's your babies. <laughs> Trying to nurse on the wrong mom there. Here, that's your mama. You nurse on her. Let me take this little one. Go show her her mama. So she can nurse on her. Don't poop on her. Yes, that's your baby. Here's your other baby. In case you were wondering. Big mouth. Alright, the two older ones are pretty good about calling mama. Right, baby? You need mama? No? Fancy girl's udder was super, super tight, so I did have to take some colostrum off to release the pressure so it'd be easier for these two newborns to nurse. Well, you can see who the more experienced mom is, staying here with the kids. You picked up an extra kid, huh? Who's that, May May? So, who's hollering out here? That's Rosemary's kid. Okay. Yeah, you have to find your mom. You have to find, you have to find her. Here, I'll help you find her. I'm good at that. I'm good at helping babies find their homes. Oh, there. There's your sister. These two don't have official names yet. We are contemplating a few different names, but nothing official. April, why are you crying? Mama's right there. See, she's just right there. You trying to go to the wrong mom? Well, if you can't keep up with mom, I'm going to put you down with Maymay in the nursery, okay? Come on. You'll be with mama later when she comes up to get you. I'm going to put this one down with Fancy Girl with the other kids. Maymay's down there, so she'll feel comfortable if she has her sister. And then Daisy can come down there to her. I'd rather have her down here in the shade than trying to keep up with mom and the sun. So mom's gonna have a chance to browse for a little bit while this one gets to rest with the other kids. There you go. There's your sister. See, there's your Maymay. Maymay's hanging out with Fancy. Fancy's a nice goat. She likes being the auntie mama. Your mama's over there, honey. Autumn, are you checking out all these babies? So Fancy's kids, oh be careful, you have horns. Fancy's kids are Scrunchy, named from Rowan. Rowan named that one. And this one is Fantasia, which is the Gaelic word for Fancy. So I finally got my Fancy dough. Um, are you nursing them? That's gonna cause some confusion and not leave enough for your babies. So let's get your babies in there nursing. It's so funny how tiny Fancy's kids look compared to the ones that were born earlier. Oh, Fancy. Ramming on them, all that did was knock your babies down from nursing. That didn't help anybody. Don't do that. The other kids are over here checking. Out the kids. Meanwhile, the big kids are playing on the playground. They are so funny. Autumn, you gonna play with them? See, she's she's begun getting in there and starting to play with the other kids. She wants to play with the little ones, but she's too big for them. No, Autumn, that's too little. I don't want you to hurt them. Normally I give it a day or two, probably usually three, in the barn before I bring the babies out. But because it's supposed to be so hot today, I think it would have been kind of torture to stay inside the barn. It would have gotten warm in there. And uh, even with the fan on, I think it would have gotten too hot. So out here in the shade with the fresh breeze. Fancy, stop. Fancy always likes to dig a hole before she lays down. That's why all this area is all sandy. All the goats kind of do that. So she is not paying attention where she's pawing at. <laughs> Knocking her baby. 
you don't knock your own baby. But she's a really good mom, so I'm not too worried about things. She's going to stay right with them the whole time. And uh, they're going to get lots of nursing. And they'll get bigger and stronger and healthier by the hour. You can totally tell who's got the oldest kids because that's the mama that's just taken off. She's like, eh, they'll be fine by themselves. So April and May May are hanging out down here with Fancy, Auntie Fancy. Fancy's happy to babysit as long as she has a little hay as payment. <laughs> She's pretty content to just chill down here in the shade. And it looks like Rosemary has settled in right there in the middle of the paddock with her two babies. So she's still keeping a close eye on hers. And then Daisy's up there somewhere. Somewhere up there. <laughs> she's like, eh, they're, they're, they're all grown now. You know, they are after all a week old. <laughs> it's so funny the different stages of development in between goats that were born just a few days apart. So these are the oldest and youngest side by side. You see the size difference? It's pretty amazing what can happen in a week. So one of the downfalls of growing a garden in Georgia is that in May, you might end up with temperatures as high as 98 degrees. That's what's expected today and for the next couple of days. It's pretty unusual for it to be that hot, but something else that I noticed that when Robert from Daybird Aviaries was here, if you didn't see that video, check it out. It's a great video um, with them here visiting and helping me out. And Yella was nice enough to weed this section of the garlic bed. And Robert was nice enough to get almost all of this bed planted with tomatoes. I had just about 10 more I had to plant behind me to finish it up and it's good. So now I know I at least have 60 tomato plants planted. Even if I don't get the, hundred, the other hundreds that I have grown planted, I know that I'll have 60 of my favorite, best varieties. So I'd like to get that other bed over there planted with tomatoes as well. And the bed on the other side of the tomatoes I have hoed and made ready for the peppers. So I just need to get to it. Unfortunately, because I couldn't get any help this year, with Ryan and his overtime and me not feeling well, the rest of the garden may not be a garden at all this year. So I had big dreams for this garden. You guys know that I wanted to heal myself through garden therapy, through the food that I would grow, through a rainbow healing garden, and that I had big expectations for this all. Unfortunately, I just don't have what it takes physically right now to do it. Ryan doesn't have the time to do it, and there just hasn't been anybody else that can help us. Robert and Daniela did an amazing feat for us, getting some plants in the ground and the garlic weeded. While they were here weeding the garlic, Robert pointed out that I had scapes, and I said, that's impossible, I planted all soft neck. Well, apparently, what I thought was a soft neck variety that I picked out was not. <laughs> so, I wanted all soft neck because they do better in the heat. But, we pulled up one of these and the bulb is fully formed. So, despite the fact that I thought it was going to be July before we were harvesting garlic, I think we're going to be harvesting pretty soon. So, what I did is I went ahead and harvested all these beautiful scapes. Aren't they amazing? I can't wait to make something delicious with them. So despite the fact that soft neck garlic grows better in Georgia, it doesn't grow scapes. So I got lucky this time where I get an extra bonus harvest of scapes. So I'm going to saute some of these softer, tender ones up in some butter or olive oil in the skillet and just eat it as is. And then I think I'm going to probably blanch and freeze a few of them to add to other meals throughout the year. I just looked over here a few minutes ago and Daisy was down here checking on her kids. But as you can see, they're in good hands with Auntie Fancy Girl.
See, Robert, I told you peas would grow in Georgia. Even though we planted late, we're still getting a few peas. Not as many as if we had planted earlier in the season when it was nice and cool. But this is a yummy treat in the garden. Mmm, they are so sweet and so delicious. I can't even make it to the house with them. Mmm, all mine. I get to enjoy it. Mmm. Got a little cauliflower head forming. I think it's because of the heat stress, not because it was time. Same for the little broccoli head that's forming. Just heat stress. So we're going to use these for mostly greens. I just don't think that these cabbages and broccoli and Brussels sprouts are going to survive through this week of heat. Even though it'll probably get normal temperatures again after this week, it's just too much for them. So it's a lot of stress on cold weather plants. So I'm kind of worried about some other stuff out here. But it's nature causing the problem this time. At least it's not my health issues that's making it so I can't plant. This time I have nothing to blame but something that I can't even get mad at because there's nothing you can do when the temperatures get hot too fast. And unfortunately there's nothing I can do about not being able to get the work done that I need to get done. Heavy lifting, moving soil, forming that all into beds, moving all the mulch over here. Those are the things I can't do. The planting, maintaining, harvesting, all of that I can do. It's just... Not being able to get to that step first prevents all of those other things from taking place. But you know, I'm just going to do the best I can. I might have Ryan run over that again with the disc and just broadcast some squash and watermelon and cucumbers and things like that that can just grow wild and let it just be a big, messy, weedy congested big old mess of plants that will still produce something hopefully sometimes you just have to make the best with what you have and sometimes what you have isn't the best sometimes your garden isn't a pretty garden sometimes it isn't the voluminous garden that you'd hope for but you just work with what you have and if it's something as small as a potted tomato on your patio because you live in an apartment then that's your best and that's awesome that you're able to do that so don't get discouraged even if you had big dreams even if you believed you were gonna have more than what you have just know that you yeah, just have to be happy with what you do have and I do have a lot and I'm blessed so for that I am grateful